Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, ASUS B350 Prime Plus full-size ATX motherboard unboxing and review. What is this? Why should you watch and why should you care? Well, in short, if you are looking at building a Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 7 1700 computer, stop, you have come to the right place. If you are hunting for the right motherboard to buy for either of those processors, you can see them here, and you want to run them at 3.7 gigahertz fixed clock speed on all the cores using the included Wraith Spire cooler that you can see right there, this should be on your short list. ASUS has been making motherboards for nearly 30 years now. They have one of the best BIOSes in the business, the most hours of compatibility and testing, and across all the different boards that I have tested so far on the AM4 AMD Ryzen platform, I have had the best overclocking success and the best memory compatibility success on the ASUS boards. Now I've not yet tested Gigabyte or Biostar, but I have tested ASRock, MSI, and ASUS multiple boards, and the ASUS boards generally have come out on top each time. If I were spending my own money right now for a Ryzen 5 1600 or a Ryzen 7 1700 using the included cooler at 3.7 gigahertz, this is the board I would buy. In fact, I did. Now I get many samples from various manufacturers. AMD sampled me, um, other companies have sampled me. This is not a product sample. I bought this motherboard with my own money, would do so again. It is very nice and contains a lot of nice features for the money. For $100, you get a board that is more capable than the extreme budget options, but doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Now let me say up front that if you're looking for a motherboard for an X chip, if you're looking for a 1600X or 1700X, I would not buy this board. I would buy the ASUS X370 Prime Pro board for about $60 more. Why you ask? Because if you're buying one of the X chips, you're gonna take it with an aftermarket cooler to four gigahertz. You want better cooling, better voltage regulation uh, support. You want better future upgradability support. You want SLI and crossfire support or proper crossfire support, more SATA ports, more USB ports, all of which can be found on that platform. For $60 more than this board cost, yes, it's more money, but you're buying a more expensive chip, you're buying an aftermarket cooler, and I think that that higher end board justifies its cost for those chips. For the non-X processors, this is the one I would buy. Now you'll notice that I did not mention the Ryzen 3 1200 or Ryzen 5 1400. Those are perfectly fine processors and there are people who should buy them, but I don't know that you need this much board for it. Now you could, but keep in mind that a Ryzen 3 1200 is a $110 processor. This is a $100 motherboard. I generally don't think you should spend as much on your motherboard as you spend on your CPU. There are some very nice $60 and $70 choices for the Ryzen 3 1200 that more appropriately complement that level of CPU. But for a six or an eight core CPU, this is the least motherboard I would buy. I do think that it's worth emphasizing that at the $100 price point, there are a lot of different motherboards you can choose from. Does this ASUS B350 Prime Plus have the most features of any $100 motherboard? Absolutely not. Does it have the flashiest RGB lighting options and the most ports and the most expandability of any of the $100 B350 boards? No, absolutely not. That's not why you buy it. You buy it because there is more compatibility testing, more RAM testing, um, there is more stability testing, and there's a better BIOS on this board than there is on most of the others. Now, I've actually built and tested systems with ASRock, MSI, and ASUS. I have not yet done Gigabyte, but that will be coming up very soon, probably next month sometime in September. I have run everything from the Ryzen 3 1200 to the Ryzen 7 1700 on the micro ATX version of this board. The simplicity and ease of setting it up for an overclock, the stability of the overclock, and the ease of just having it work without a lot of headaches are why you buy this board. If I was giving advice to somebody who wanted to tinker as little as possible to just plug one of these in and use it, get good performance without a lot of headaches, this is the board I would buy. Okay, that's nearly enough talking. Why don't we take this out of the box and see what it looks like? Inside the box, we have the motherboard itself, of course. ASUS provides you with two serial ATA data cables. There are actually six SATA ports on the board, so if you wanna connect more than two drives, you'll need to buy some more cables. They're only a couple of bucks a piece, but just keep in mind that only two come in the box. 
ASUS provides you with a basic manual that contains the information about what all the ports and connectors do, how to plug in the front panel connectors, etc. We have our I.O. shield for the back of your computer case. And we have a driver CD, which you should not need. If you have Windows 10 on a USB thumb drive, it'll have everything you need to install on this. Run Windows Update and then download and install the AM4 chipset drivers from AMD's website to get everything fully up to date, and then you shouldn't need this. Any specialized software that you want from ASUS, you should download from ASUS's website anyway, because those versions will be more up to date than the CD will. I'm actually holding the board now because I want to show you what the true color is. When it's resting on those stands, it reflects a lot of light from my studio lights in here, and I want you to see what the board will really look like color-wise when it's inside your system. In fact, if I hold it angled down, you'll see how dark it gets. So it's actually reflecting a lot of light from my studio lights, but of course, inside your computer case, it's not going to do that. I just want to point out some of the key features of this board and one of the reasons why I think it is so wonderful. This board's M.2 location is excellent. Not all of the boards do this, but the M.2 slot for a solid state drive, either an NVMe performance drive or a budget SATA drive, is above the graphics card slot, which improves cooling for it. Too many motherboards put the M.2 slot below the graphics card slot, which means your graphics card is sitting on top of that, so it's a good location. This board also has full ESD electronic static discharge protection for all of the back ports. It has a LAN guard and then it has separate ESD chips for each of the rows of ports back here. If you plug in a USB cable or an Ethernet cable that has a static charge on it, there is dissipators and protectors on this board. Not all $100 boards do and that's very nice. I have two motherboards older that both have had their LAN ports fried from electrostatic electro discharge. So it is a real concern and this board is fully protected. Now this motherboard is not an RGB board, meaning there's no RGB lights on it, but there is one RGB header right in the middle of the board, uh, just below the CPU. So if you have an external uh, RGB fan or RGB light strip for your system, you certainly can plug that in. This system does have two VRM heat sinks up here, which is nice. Many of these $100 boards are missing a heat sink on the top. Now this is not a fancy high-end power delivery system, but it's absolutely good enough to run a Ryzen 7 1700 on all eight cores at 3.7 gigahertz fixed on the stock cooler just fine. That's why I said earlier that if you wanna run a 1700X at four gigahertz with aftermarket cooling, you want a higher end board. The 150 to $160 X370 Prime Pro board has more power delivery up here and a full size heatsink. It's one of the examples of what you get when you spend a bit more money. And if you wanna to get to four gigahertz, I would spend a bit more on your motherboard. But for using the stock coolers, this is absolutely all that you need. If you come down to the bottom, you'll see that not only do we have four SATA ports here, but there are two more on the side right here. This is important. The B350 by itself only supports four SATA ports, four serial ATA ports. This particular motherboard has an extra chip to provide two more, so it gives you six. Most B350s don't do that. The sound chip, the Realtek 800 series, is isolated. There is a trace on the motherboard over here physically isolating the audio chip from the rest of the board to reduce noise and uh, interference from the rest of your system. Right here in the center, you can see two full-size PCI Express slots supporting two AMD graphics cards in Crossfire. Now, I am not a big fan of Crossfire or SLI at the moment because current game compatibility is pretty poor, but if you disagree with me or just want the support there, it is there. Please note that does not support NVIDIA's SLI. You have to go to the X370 motherboards to get that. You will also see two old school PCI slots. Odds are nobody's going to use them, but they're there in case you need them, and a few 1X slots as well. On the bottom of the board are all the various headers for the front audio uh, panel connectors, USB 3 and USB 2 front panel header connectors, and of course the front power reset switch, hard drive activity light, etc. Looking at the back panel I.O. shield, I do like the various ports provided here. You have a combination PS2 keyboard mouse connector. It'll work for either one. Nice for compatibility if you have a need for such a thing. There are two USB 2.0 ports back here. What are those for? Keyboard and mouse. You have four USB 3.0 5 gigabit per second ports two USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second ports. Please note that those are both Type-A ports. There are no Type-C ports on this board. 
There is the Realtek Ethernet Gigabit uh, network connection back there. And then you have the audio ports for the Realtek 800 series audio chip. Now this does support full surround sound HD audio, but it only provides three ports instead of the normal six. So you'd have to use the front panel ports in connection if you had a 7.1 surround system. In reality, if you have such a system, you're probably buying a nicer board. For standard speaker systems with say two speakers and then a subwoofer, this works just fine. Please note that there is a VGA, a DVI, and an HDMI port. Those don't work with Ryzen processors. Those work with AMD's APUs, where the graphics card is integrated into the processor. But a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 has no uh, built-in graphics, and so those actually don't do anything. This has been my look at the $100 ASUS B350 Prime Plus motherboard. Again, let me emphasize Ryzen 5 1600, Ryzen 7 1700 using the included Wraith Spire cooler. This is a very nice, very thick 95 watt TDB cooler with a copper plug on the bottom. This is not a cheap cooler. If you've used stock coolers in the past and been disappointed, give this a try before you spend any more money on a cooler. It really does a good job. And that fan is extremely quiet. I've done a video on my channel showing that with the audio in the past that is very, very silent. Those CPUs, this motherboard, easy installation, good value for the money, two thumbs up. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below this video. Questions and comments in the comment section, please check out the video description. Links to this motherboard and these CPUs to Amazon and Newegg will be down there. If you found this video helpful and useful, please use those links when shopping, it really does help. Links to my full playlist of all my motherboard and CPU reviews, including the launch reviews of all the Ryzen chips and benchmarks will be down in the video description below as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.